Skyhawks fans and welcome to our 21st and final episode of Skyhawk Update. I'm Craig Riotto and I'll be taking you through last week's slew of highlights with baseball, track and field, and softball as well as an update on women's lacrosse. Be sure to stay tuned throughout as we will also be featuring our top 10 plays of the year in our final segment of the program. Without further ado, let's check in on our favorite Skyhawk sports teams and see how they fared. We'll pick it up with softball, a team making its first ever appearance on the show with video highlights, and they put some good ones out there for us. They're in a tight playoff race, looking to take care of business at home in a doubleheader with Franklin Pierce. And Nicole Eisenman knew exactly what to do with that pitch. She goes deep to left center field off Rachel Allen, 7-4 Stonehill in the bottom of the second, piling up the runs early in a slugfest. When we go to the top of the third, Melissa Morgan goes deep to center field, leaves the ballpark in a hurry. That was her second of the game, cut Stonehill's lead to two. Franklin Pierce would add two more before ending that inning. So it's all tied at seven, which brings Courtney Marchand to the plate. Bottom of the third, could it be another? It's all the way out to the wall, off the bottom of the wall, a stand-up double for Marchand. She drives in Morrell from second base, Stonehill's on top, eight to seven. And the Skyhawks would not look back from there. You're going to see on this next highlight, great defense from Jocelyn Morrell. A diving stab at third base. Sends it over to first from the knees. Stonehill takes the game. Final score 12 to 8. They would go on and take the next game as well at home. Final score of 6 to 1. After which they traveled to San A's for three games against the Hawks. Important games. Stonehill took the first matchup but dropped the second two by final scores of 3 to 2, 3 to 2. Nonetheless, Stonehill's done just enough to get themselves into the playoffs with the number four seed in the Northeast Division. Keeping their tournament championship hopes alive, it's single elimination from here on out. First matchup taking place this afternoon at St. A's. Despite playing the nation's second most difficult schedule in all of Division II according to LaxPower.com rankings, the women's lacrosse team has managed to go 12-5 overall with an even more impressive 10-2 mark in Northeast 10 play. Helped by a three-game winning streak to close the regular season, the Skyhawks have secured the number three seed in the Northeast 10 tournament and, like the softball team, will play number six seed at St. Anselm College. This game will take place in Easton, however, as tomorrow, Wednesday, May 1st at 4 p.m. Ironically, the women closed their regular season with a thrilling one-point victory over St. A's just one week ago. Heather Sullivan netted the game winner with 3.29 to play in what was a back-and-forth contest that featured eight lead changes and eight ties. Green and Riley both had productive days as well, but needless to say, it is going to be quite a rematch at WB Mason Stadium on Wednesday. Right back in WB Mason Stadium for the annual Skyhawk Invitational. This was last Friday, and both the men's and women's teams put their best foot forward in preparation for next week's NE10 Championships in Springfield. To senior Kevin McCann work in the pole vault, he finished in a tie for fourth after clearing 13 feet 5 and a quarter inches. A great effort by the senior McCann. Now we'll take a look at the women's 400 meter dash. Freshman Jordan Gray out of the block, finishing two tenths of a second behind sophomore teammate Maria Curit in lane five. Here's the finish as they come down the home stretch. Curit and Jordan took second and third in the event, helping the women to a second place overall finish at the meet only behind the University of Rhode Island. And here's the 100 meter dash, featuring somebody you might recognize if you're a regular viewer of our show, Amanda Egesey, one of our fellow Skyhawk Update anchors from last fall, crossing the line in sixth place with a time of 13.07 seconds Great effort by Amanda. Now we go to the men's 800, possibly the most entertaining race to watch, at least for Stonehill fans. Reason being, there's five incredibly capable runners and they know how to stick together. Coming up on the final turn, it's Hamlin, Cooney, and senior Sam Spencer. One, two, and three to the home stretch, a wall of purple. It looks good, but in the last eight hundredths of a second, Curtis Johnson of AIC beats out Hamlin for first place. Stonehill takes five of the top seven spots, however, helping the men to a resounding overall team victory at the meet. We'll walk it over to Lou Gorman Field for Sunday's baseball game against St. Anselm College. 
Men are in a tight playoff race of their own and desperately needing a win, but Richie Manzi of St. A's is thinking something else. He wraps one up the middle, driving in Karka and tying the game at one in the top of the fifth. That would bring Dan Freitas to the plate in the eighth inning, batting cleanup and pounding one to left center field, just out of reach of the fielder. That's going to drive in James D'Alto from second. Campbell's going to slide into third safely, just off your screen. And the Skyhawks are working their way back into this game. Bottom of the eighth still, a rally going, and Billy Corrales is going to keep it going with a good piece of hitting. Right up the middle, look out pitcher, drives one into center field, that brings in Campbell. Freitas is going to score from second, makes the score 6-4, to four, but that unfortunately was all the Skyhawks could muster as they drop a key divisional game to the Hawks. Final score 6-4. Stone will drop two out of three in the series, which makes them a combined one and six in their last seven games. Fortunately, Stonehill can still control its own destiny, however, as it has four games remaining. For all four of those games, the first one against UMass Lowell, and then three against Merrimack, two teams that are just above them in the standings, clinging to that fourth playoff spot. It's time for our top 10 plays of the year. No better way, in our opinion, than to close out our show by putting the finest efforts of some of our greatest athletes on display. Let's waste no more time. Let's roll those highlights. At number 10, and I think you all might all remember this one from our last top 10 countdown. Johnny Gomes lays out in the pass from Logan Meyer, gets his team all the way down to the two yard line. That is a senior wide receiver making big plays for his team. Number nine, you saw this earlier on the show, the diving stab by Jocelyn Morrell. Throw to the first from the knees, great defensive play. Love to recognize a little softball and some good defense. To the ice for number eight, this is a two for one. So you're gonna see this one, Steven Balsamo with your truck stick at center ice, right over the defense. And Robbie Dorgan with a little stick handling action here. The dangle right by. Couldn't quite finish the play, would have been an ESPN top play had he netted that goal. Now to the hardwood, Raheem May Thompson gets this one going with the hustle. Carter Smith, ankles right by, dish to Jack Cole. Get used to seeing that combination, folks. A freshman to a sophomore, they're going to be fun to watch in the next couple of years. Now number six, Kelsey Riley. Not on the prettiest goal of her career by far, but her 200th career point joins some elite company in this Stonehill Cross program and helps the Skyhawks top the number 10 ranked Dowling College. Now to number five, this is sophomore Ben Zandanella. He made our highlight reel back in the winter as he's gonna net two goals in a row in two minutes and 10 seconds. Power kick from Zandanella and he's gonna be fun to watch the next two years here in a Skyhawk uniform. Now to number four, if you all don't remember this one, uh, you must not have been on campus. Stonehill women's basketball takes down number one nationally ranked Bentley University. We've got a storming of the court. It was an epic moment, one of the greater moments here on campus for Skyhawks athletics. First time they've ever beaten a number one nationally ranked team. We go to number three, take it to the pitch. You must remember this highlight. One of my favorites from all year, Christine Moody is gonna get a one-timer off the header from Renee Trudeau. She buries it in the back of the net. A sudden death over time ender. One of the more athletic plays we've seen all year long. And number two, a big time shout out to Cross Country once again. They hold on to the number two spot, in our opinion, in the top 10 with their sweep of the Northeast 10 championship title. And number one, of course, it could be nothing but this. Hanging on to that number one spot, Kevin Anderson is going to go 99 yards on the interception return. Gets his team back on top with just 6 minutes and 19 seconds to play. Assumption was knocking on the door and he completely reversed that. Somersaults into the end zone, ends things in style. A game-changing performance if we ever saw one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap things up on our final episode of Skyhawk Update. It's been a pleasure bringing you the best of Stonehill Athletics all season long. I want to wish Best of luck to the rest of the spring sports still going in their tournament and their playoff scenarios. Also want to thank everyone that was involved in bringing Skyhawk Update to you all season long, all year long with the production. That goes beyond just the team. I'm talking about Lena Macedo, Mike Petrowski, Peter George, George Tyrell. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll see you in the fall. One more time. Go Skyhawks. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank <laughs> you.